Hi, and welcome to another video discussion at i3d.net. My name is Zahid Rahman, and I'm part of the brand and comms team. And we have an interesting topic of discussion today for you, which is sustainability. Uh, in the tech industry, yes, but also um, we'll be looking at it a little closer in the game hosting and um, in the hosting industry in general. Um, and we have with us today Eva Pressman, who is our operations manager. And I'll let you speak a little more about it, what it is that you do, because it's very complicated for me, at least. Thank you. Uh, well, it's not that complicated. As an operations manager at, uh, at IVD, I uh, manage within operations. So operations uh, is both the infrastructure side of things and there's the service side of things. So when we say service, we mean our service desk, our project management, our uh, compliance, our supply chain. And infrastructure is where our engineers are, so our uh, system engineers, network engineers, DevOps, architects. So I'd say that about 50% of my role was HR related. So I, um, I, I touch a lot with, uh, with our staff doing uh, some recruitment as well. Um, and then the other 50% is operational. So I can pick up uh, projects in any shape or form as long as they touch upon multiple groups within mm -hmm. operations. Sustainability obviously is a, a topic that touches upon multiple groups. So that's why uh, I'm one of the persons within IVD that's trying to drive change. Um, so yeah, hence why I'm here. All right. Yeah. I mean, since you're handling the sustainability side of things, I wanted to pose a lot of questions to you on that. But like we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to divide it in three sections. And the first one has to do with emissions. Now, as a gaming infrastructure company or a hosting company, you you know this. And I think all of every our audience also understands this, that companies in this um, line of the industry have have a lot of power use. So how do companies in tech go about reducing their carbon footprint or emissions when they have such a power drawing system? So I think it's about a sense of urgency and it's also about a sense of visibility. Um, some years ago, we were not busy uh, to improve things related to this topic at all. And nowadays, it's very much part of decision making. Uh, but for it to be able to be a part of decision making, you need to know what you're talking about. So, for example, um, some years ago, we weren't very aware of how much power we were using exactly. Um, that makes it hard to make a decision based on that. And based on that. Nowadays, we know how much power we use per server type, per device type, uh, down to the rec level in our data centers. Um, having that knowledge makes it possible for us to, to, to start making better decisions. Um, and I think that's where it all starts. Hmm. That's interesting because I was also, you're talking about the challenges you had at least in the beginning, which was having, being able to account for all the, uh, the emissions and everything. But what do you think how that has evolved in terms of the challenges and obstacles? What are the challenges now, now that you're better at accounting for carbon emissions at least? So, um, the challenges are getting even better at all. So what we're seeing is we make a report each year uh, on our power usage for of our data center sites. And it's a report that we can see getting more and more accurate each and every year. Uh, and that's because we make improvements on the way we do reporting. So for example, we started out asking all of our data center vendors, how much power are we using? Um, nowadays we start to uh, measure the power users ourselves for our own computer use. So instead of relying on third-party vendors to give us that information, we do it ourselves. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that, that's one of the improvements that, that, that we made. Um, the next step is, is trying to further improve the situation. We, we are looking at a number of things. We're looking at the life cycle of our devices. We are looking at the, um, how is the power that we use, how, how is that produced? Uh, we've got our own data center in Rotterdam. We are very much in control there. The power that we use there is renewable. The heat that we produce there is, is being reused to reheat the office building next door. Um, so in those spaces, we are very much in control. And then there's other places where we aren't that much in control. All right, you touched upon two issues there that I think I want to talk to you about personally, and I'm sure our audience will also be interested to hear. First was about life cycle. So let's start there. Um, Let's talk about reduction of waste. Um, and you mentioned life cycles, and that's a very core component of reduction of waste in the infrastructure industry. So could you speak to the importance of reducing waste in tech um, and what we do, for example? Yeah. So there's a couple of things we do. Um, we are a performance hosting company, which means that the equipment that we use is the latest of the latest, and that's, that's the need that our customers have. 
Uh, that being said, we do have a business case for those devices after the first one or two years. Um, so we try to extend the life cycle of the devices that we use for as long as we can. Hmm. Uh, that has always been the game for us. Nowadays, we do understand that there is a tipping point. I mean, at some point, you, you, you come to a point where you use four devices, while you could also use one device with more efficiency to do the same task. Yes. Uh, and, and at that point, you have to ask yourself, is it really efficient to continue using the older devices? Um, so that's something that, that we are nowadays thinking about that we weren't before uh, when we talk about the life cycle. Uh, also, we know that we have some data center sites where all of the power that we use is renewable. So if we're going to use machines that maybe are not as efficient as the, the newest of the newest, then I, we think it's better to use those machines in places where uh, at least the power that we use is renewable hmm. instead of using non-efficient machines in places where the power that we use is not re renewable. All right. So use cases matter and al also location and how you use those devices matter as well, essentially. Yes. And then when it comes to recycling, reusing, um, at some point, devices do no longer have a use in our business case. Of course. Of course. We, we come to that point. So we do have e-waste and, and there's, there's simply no way of, um, um, well, it's there. Yes. So we have to think about how to approach that problem. All of the e-waste that we have is being recycled or it's being reused. Nice. Uh, we have a partner that we work together with um, and they pick up our e-waste a couple of times a year and uh, they give us a certificate per device and they make sure that all of the uh, uh, hardware that no longer has a use in IVD gets a use in another organization or gets recycled for, for the parts and the, uh, the metals and such. Uh, and once a year we get a report from them uh, mm -hmm. which tells us exactly how much CO2 uh, um, yeah, has been prevented um, while doing that. Hmm. All right, that sounds promising. And finally, moving away from use cases and life cycle, um, I'd like to speak about efficiency and maximizing it. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with energy and heat. Um, as you already mentioned, we're an infrastructure, a performance hosting company. We have our own data center. All of this combines to use a lot of energy and obviously generate a lot of heat as a byproduct. Um, you kind of already spoke about renewable energy and how we use it, but could you speak a little more about the importance of it in in high consumption situations such as the data center, the data center sorry? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we use a lot of power. Hmm. Um, and that's because of the business that we are in. Uh, but we do have a choice uh, when we decide where that power comes from. The vast majority of the power that we use is, is renewable. Um, Rotterdam, our own data center, all of the power that we use there is renewable. The heat that we produce is being reused. So um, we can't not use power, hmm. but at least when we have the option, we, we make sure that the power that we use is reusable. Then uh, when we have those machines that aren't that efficient anymore because they're a couple of years old, for example, Canada is a great um, uh, example of a country where a lot of the power that's being used is being uh, made through hydroelectric. Um, so that's 100% renewable. So we choose to move those machines to those locations or Rotterdam to, hmm. to, to use them there. All right. Uh, finally, the last question I have is, and you mentioned this briefly again in one of your answers, you mentioned the heat pumps at Smart DC Rotterdam, at our data center in Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. Could you speak a bit more about, well, firstly, just briefly touch upon the heat pumps, but also speak about innovation um, in, the, in the industry and how we can use it to maximize efficiency? Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, so about the heat pumps, we have our data center at a UNESCO site. Um, part of that UNESCO site is the Vanilla uh, office building that used to be a factory. Um, it's an old building. Mm. Uh, and because it's a UNESCO site, they are not able to change anything about the outside, about the appearance of the building, which means, for example, that the, the glass that they use is, is one layer, one layer of glass. Um, so in terms of insulation and such, it's not an efficient building. So they used to use a lot of gas to heat the building. While we had a data center that's just down the road, on the same campus uh, and we were producing a lot of heat but that would just go outside and would not be used hmm. um, so seeing that situation uh, we, we made the uh, uh, we, we chose to, 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 to change that to start reusing that heat and nowadays we use a heat pump to, uh, to to bring that heat that we 
create in our data center and we use it to heat up this UNESCO uh, uh, office site. Yeah, so that's the heat pumps. But then uh, I think we spoke off screen about a couple of other innovations in the industry that, yeah. that are exciting and promising for the future. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things that we are looking into. Uh, the submersible racks is, is about one of the things that we spoke about. Um, it's an interesting one. We aren't sure yet if, if we can use it for our business case, but we are investigating and we are investigating other options too hmm. um, because we, we, we don't want to bet on just one horse, right? Of course. We want to make sure that our power is renewable. We want to make sure that we recycle all of our old devices. We want to make sure that the power that we use is uh, that our, our machines are as efficient as possible. So uh, we're also in touch with our customers, for example. We reach out to our big customers and we, we, we tell them, hey, can we work together on running your application as efficient as possible on our machines so uh, we can save some power there. And maybe that's only one or two or three percent per server, but uh, when you use thousands of machines, that's that's still a big impact. Um, so those are all steps that we are making, um, and we're also looking at new steps to make. And, and well, that's where we look at innovation. Uh, we look at all of them. Not everything is usable for us because we have a very specific use case. But when it is, then then our engineers start investigating. Okay, how can we use this? When can we use this? Um, yeah, and then we start experimenting. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time out today, Eva. I know you're very busy at the organization. Uh, thank you to our audience for listening in. Um, we hope to have more content on the YouTube channel soon about other informational topics such as this. So be sure to tune in whenever you can. Thank you so much. Thank you.